Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Simon Van Ass from Tia Technologies. I'm Operations Director for North America. And I'm actually um, replacing one of my colleagues who was scheduled to do this talk originally, which is our senior solution architect for North America, but he couldn't be here at the last minute. So I'll be doing the presentation today. I'll do it a bit more uh, commercial, strategically, and less technically, because that's where my background is. Uh, if you have any technical questions at the end, uh, we have a colleague in the room who will also answer your questions from a technical perspective as well. Uh, but we will do the presentation more so on what is HSP actually and where do we think it can provide value for uh, the video streaming industry. First question, do any of you or how many of you rather have already heard about HSP before seeing this slide? So a few, that's good already. Uh, good to know. So first, very briefly about Tio Technologies. So who is Tio Technologies? We're a startup uh, located in Belgium, founded in 2012, but already have offices here in North America as well, as well as in APEC. Uh, about 80 plus employees, I think right now, maybe also already more than 90. Uh, and our core product since 2012 has actually been our Tio player. So it's the Tio player universal video player, and we see that as a bit of a best of breed video player. So it has a very rich feature set and it's availability across all the commonly used platforms. Uh, but since two years, we've actually been developing the HSP protocol as well, which is a bit of a new product for us. Uh, and we've done that because we've seen, uh, because we are very player focused, that from that perspective, there is an opportunity to actually create a better protocol that's better suited to uh, to playback actually, but we'll, see, we'll talk about that uh, later. You'll see that later. Um, yeah, just a slide with some of our milestones. I just want to show this uh, because actually we have won today the Reader's Choice Award as well for the best uh, video player solution for 2019 as well. So it's not yet on there, but that's good as well. But I just wanted to show this uh, to show that we're a very innovative company and very product focused, very engineering focused. Uh, and that's why we think we can deliver on our promises with HSP as well. So on to HSP. But first, uh, I want to discuss with you a bit the context. So these are the main issues that we see with online streaming today. So there's four that we highlighted as general blocks. First of all, yeah, unwanted latency. Nobody likes that. Uh, can spoil experiences. Eh? You all probably heard the story or know the story that um, if you're watching a live sports event on an OTT platform, uh, you're enjoying it, but then you hear your neighbors screaming and shouting, cheering, while you're still watching commercials. So they have analog broadcast cable, and they've already, already seen a goal or a touchdown or wherever you're from, it depends, scored, and you're still watching commercials. So in that way, on what the latency still spoils experience with many of the commonly used or the big OTT platforms today. Second of all, huge bandwidth costs. So as you all know, uh, video consumption, OTT video consumption has been significantly increasing for a long time and is expected to increase even more. So of course that's good for the industry in general, but the, point, the problem is that bandwidth costs have remained quite stable, have already only decreased very slightly. So bandwidth costs are becoming more and more of a problem as video platforms scale up. Then another one, the third one, that's not talked about as much as, as we think it should be is the long zapping time. So back in the day uh, of an analog broadcast, zapping was instant. But since OTT platforms have become the norm, zapping times of two to three to five seconds even are very common. And we believe that actually spoils, the, spoils a bit of the experience for many viewers. Uh, but that's something that commonly used protocols today cannot really solve. And fourth of all, and this is of course related to the latency mainly. Interactivity is becoming more and more interesting for many, many OTT platforms, many entertainment shows, but to provide real, real time interactivity with mass audiences is very difficult because yeah, you have that latency and sub-second latency is almost impossible at a, at a very large scale. So to tens of millions of people at the same time with current protocols. And what is the, what is for us a bit the, overarching reason for those main issues, that's a bit this triangle. So we call that the trade-off triangle uh, in streaming protocols. So on the one hand, you have low latency. On top, bottom left, you have scalability. And on the bottom right, you have fewer experience. So 
So with VR experience for us, we, we generalize this a bit as a collection of uh, video quality, but also instant zapping, ti or zapping times rather, or ABR switching times. But the point is that you actually, with all of the current protocols, you have to make, make a bit of a choice to prioritize one or two and to compromise on the third one. For example, if you want low latency uh, or ultra low latency, yeah, that's gonna, you can do that, um, but it's gonna increase the cost if you want to scale that up very much. On the other hand, if you wanna do very large scale, so to tens of millions or hundreds of millions of people, achieving very low latency is very difficult as well. And this is shown a bit in this slide where we concrete, concretize that for the current protocol. So both HTTP-based protocol as well as non-HTTP-based protocols. Yeah, as you know, HTTP-based protocols are very good in scaling up to massive audiences, but there's a certain trade-off that you have to make in terms of, for example, zapping time, uh, in terms of latency as well uh, for some of the protocols. We see indeed that on the latency side that Chunk CMAF promises to make an improvement on the, on, the, on the latency side, but still it's not ultra low, it's, it's only low, it's a few seconds, it's not ultra low, it's sub, sub second. And there's still a trade-off for zapping time that you make, and the bandwidth, uh, will the bandwidth uses will increase again as compared to other HTTP-based protocols. And then you have indeed the non-HTTP-based protocols which are very good at ultra low latency, but on the other hand, you can scale them, but it will also cost you talking in general here. But then enter HSP, and this is how uh, we believe HSP can make a difference. There's actually, we think that if you remember the triangle, uh, we don't think you have to compromise on the triangle for either of the three uh, with HSP, uh, because you can have the ultra low latency, you can have an excellent user experience, and you can have, can have HTTP uh, level scalability at low cost. So why is this? Because we've thought that actually HSP has been developed for, not from the perspective of what does a server need to play out or to play out the streams or to push the streams to the player, like most of the common protocols. It's actually made from the perspective of the, of the player. So we are expert in, in player development. So we've thought about what does a player actually need to stream the content most efficiently at the lowest latency, at the lowest bandwidth, at a very in a very scalable way. And that's on a high level um, what we've developed with HSP. So HSP is a HTTP-based protocol as well, but instead of using segments like the others, it's actually frame-based. So that allows it to have ultra-low latency, but also ultra-low zapping time because you can enter the stream basically at any, any frame. And we've put actually these, the, uh, the previous slide to the test. So these are the results of a test we did, and we've published this in a white paper as well, but these are the, the generic results, let's say. Uh, how was this test set up? So we captured the video feeds in our office in Belgium. Uh, it was encoded and sent to a CDN in Ireland, where it was packaged and was sent back over the CDN back to Belgium. And we've measured uh, HSP as compared to the several CMOF, uh, chunk CMF configurations for latency, for bandwidth, bandwidth and, and for zapping time. So on the latency side, you see that we, have, we achieved 330 milliseconds uh, on that real life, uh, real life test. If, if you would compare that to chunk CMF, which is 2.3 seconds, that's a significant difference. And you can also see that this latency, so 330 milliseconds would allow indeed for interactive video formats on a massive scale. On the bandwidth side, that's also interesting. So you see here that um, the bandwidth usage for the same, as the, the same asset that was streamed basically would be 20% less. Specifically for the bandwidth test, we actually configured HSP to have the same latency as Chunk CMF, so 2.3 milliseconds to make a proper comparison possible. If you would use the optimal HSP encoding parameters, so to have a latency of, of 330 milliseconds, then the bandwidth reduction compared to CMOF, uh, Chang CMOF would still be 10% less. So if you think about streaming on a massive scale, a 10 to 20% less reduction in bandwidth uses is also a huge cost, re cost reduction that would be possible, we believe. Lastly, you see the zapping time. Yeah, you see the zapping time is actually almost instantaneous for HSP less than 100 milliseconds, so it's truly an, an analog or an analog broadcast uh, experience that is made possible by HSP, and if you compare that with Chunk CMF, yeah, the difference 
is quite significant, obviously. So, but these are not the only benefits of, um, of uh, HSP. Another benefit is that, as said, HSP is a purely HTTP-based protocol. So what does that mean? It's perfectly scalable over standard uh, HTTP CDNs. Um, we've tested uh, HTTP with third-party CDNs, and it just works. Um, the CDNs, they only need to support, support HTTP uh, chunk transfer encoding and uh, HTTP transfer, uh, range requests. So a lot of them do. So. It, it's, it's quite scalable and it doesn't need a lot of investment on the infrastructure side. Uh, furthermore, we've made it, uh, we've ensured that HSP is also uh, compatible with all of the major platforms and devices. So that means all of the browsers, but also the iOS and the Android ecosystem. Uh, it's fully compatible with. Uh, what, so what, what the point here actually is, if it's, it, because it's an HTTP-based uh, protocol, it can actually be a perfect replacement for the content workflow that you have now because you just need to replace your packaging uh, and you need to replace your player, but all in, in, in essence, because it's perfectly, perfectly compatible with the rest of your content workflow, you just need to replace those parts and it will just work. So in summary, yeah, what we see then as the benefits of HSP compared to current protocols, there's actually six. So important one, of obviously, the sub-second latency at a massive scale uh, to, to hundreds of millions of people. In, th in theory, uh, you can have sub-second latency. Second of all, there's the bandwidth reduction, so 10 to 20%. On a massive scale, again, that's quite a significant cost reduction that could be possible. Third of all, there's the instant stopping time. Yeah, for many OTT platforms, who value a, 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 a premium user experience that could be quite interesting as well. Fourth is the scalability, because it's HTTP-based, uh, makes it easy to adopt as well. And five is related to the zapping time. Of course, the ABR switching time is also instant. And six, it's available on all the most important platforms um, because uh, yeah, it's HTTP-based. So now you're wondering, so these are the benefits. How how are we planning actually to commercialize HSP? Uh, because development is finali fi uh, being finalized around this period. What we're going to do is actually establish with a few partners the HSP Alliance. And it will be an industry organization similar to the Dash Industry Forum, for example, that will promote the HSP open standard. We'll also further develop the spec. We'll do market education. We'll uh, certify specific HSP-based products. Um, so that's really what, we go, what we're going for to try to make HSP an open standard that's available to everyone. Uh, the Alliance will also um, develop a royalty model and license, it, license the HSP player rather via a royalty model based on market fair usage pricing, so, but only on the playback of HSP content, not so much on the encoding on the processing side. And this is what, what we want to do to really promote adoption worldwide. So we're only focusing on royalties for the, for the player side. And also non-commercial usage, which may be relevant, won't, won't have to uh, pay any royalties at all. Uh, and so that's very important. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a, HSP is not a protocol that will only be available with the TO player. It will, of course, be out of the box ready with the TO player from the start, but it's open to all other players um, when they get requests from sort of customers to integrate. It will be open to all players, players to integrate into their system as well. Uh, and in terms of timing, so what we're aiming for to launch the HSP Alliance and of course the HSP product then should be, should come a big uh, announcement, let's say in uh, April 2020 at, at uh, Las Vegas Fair, Las Vegas conference then. Um, because that's when we really want to launch the HSP Alliance. And from that point on, yeah, Interested, inter, interested companies can come, come, come to us or the alliance partners to integrate HSP. So yeah, that's a bit uh, general intro on, on, on the HSP protocol. If you have any questions for me on the commercial, the strategic side, happy to ask them. The QR code contains actually our HSP white paper with more details on the test, also on the, va on the value proposition of HSP. So it's a direct link and you can go there. Any questions on the commercial side, happy to answer. We also have our senior solution architect in the room. So if you have really technical questions on how it actually works, uh, he's here as well to answer. So please go ahead. <laughs>